So before we talk about the fundamental ideas behind Ethereum and cryptocurrency, perhaps it'd be nice to uh, to talk about the the origin story of Bitcoin mm -hmm. and the uh, mystery of Satoshi Nakamoto. Mm -hmm. You gave a talk that started with sort of asking the question, what did uh, Satoshi Nakamoto actually invent? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you could say, who is Satoshi Nakamoto and what did he invent? Sure. So Satoshi Nakamoto is... Uh, the name uh, by which we know the uh, person who uh, originally came up with Bitcoin. So the reason why I say the name by which we know is that uh, this is a um, anonymous uh, fellow who has uh, shown himself to us only um, over the internet uh, just uh, by yeah, first publishing the white paper uh, for Bitcoin, uh, then uh, releasing the original source code for Bitcoin, and then talking to the very early Bitcoin community on Bitcoin forums and uh, and of interacting with them and helping uh, the project along for a couple of years. Um, and then at some point in uh, late 2010 to early 2011, he disappeared. Uh, so Bitcoin is uh, a fairly unique project in how it has this uh, kind of mythical kind of quasi godlike founder who just kind of popped in did the thing and kind of disappeared and we've somehow just never heard from him again so in, in 2008 was so the white paper was the first do you know yes. if the white paper was the first time the name was actually appears satoshi nakamoto i believe so so how is it possible that the creator of such a impactful project remains anonymous that's a tough question and there's no similarity to it in the history of technology, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. So one possibility is that it's Hal Finney, um, because uh, Hal Finney was uh, kind of also active in the Bitcoin community, and as um, Hal Finney um, in those uh, two beginning years. And uh, Hal, who is was, Hal Finney? Maybe uh, he is uh, one of the people in the end of early cypherpunk community. He was uh, so he's a computer scientist. Just yeah, one computer of the scientists, cryptographers, people interested in uh, like technology, internet freedom, like those kinds of topics. Was it correct that that I read that he seemed to have been involved in either the earliest or the first transaction of Bitcoin. Yes. The first transaction of Bitcoin was between Satoshi and Alfini. Do you think he knew who Satoshi was? If he, if was he wasn't Satoshi, Satoshi, probably no. How is it possible to work so closely with people and nevertheless not know anything about their fundamental identity? Is, is this like a natural sort of characteristic of the internet? Hmm. Like if we were to think about it, because you and I just met now Mm -hmm. There's a there's a depth of knowledge that we, we now have about each other that's like physical. Like that's my true. vision system is able to recognize you. Mm -hmm. I can also verify your identity of uniqueness. Like yeah, this, like it's very hard to fake you being you. Yeah. Uh, so the internet, <laughs> the internet has a fundamentally different quality to it, which is just fascinating. Can you maybe yeah, no, this is that? definitely interesting. As I definitely just know a lot of people just by their internet handles. Yeah. And like, to me, when I think of them, like I see their internet handles and uh, one of them has a kind of profile picture as this uh, kind of face that's kind of not quite human with a bunch of kind of psychedelic colors in it. And when I visualize him, like I just visualize that. That, <laughs> not an actual face. Yeah. You are the creator of the second... Well, he's currently the second most popular cryptocurrency, mm -hmm. uh, Ethereum. So on this topic, if we just stick on Satoshi Nakamoto for, for a little bit longer, mm -hmm. you may be the most qualified person to speak to the psychology of this anonymity that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Like your identity is known, like we, yes. I've just verified <laughs> it. But uh, from your perspective, what are the benefits in uh, creating a cryptocurrency and then remaining anonymous? Like if it can psychoanalyze mm -hmm. Satoshi Nakamoto, is there something interesting there? Or is it, it just a peculiar quirk of him? It definitely helps create this uh, kind of image of this uh, kind of neutral thing that doesn't belong to anyone. Um, that you, know, you created a project okay. 
and because you're anonymous and because uh, you also have, uh, disappear or as unfortunately happened to Halfini, if that is him, he ended up, uh, I think, dying of uh, Lou Gehrig's disease and he's in a cryogenic freezer now. But like if you pop in and you and uh, you create it and, and you're gone and uh, all that's remaining of uh, that whole process is the thing itself, then like no one can go and try to um and if interpret any of your other behavior and try to understand like oh the like this person wrote this thing um in some essay at a, at age 16 where he expressed particular opinions about democracy and so because of that this project is like is a statement that's trying to do this specific thing yeah. like it, instead it creates uh, this uh, environment where and the thing is what you make of it and hmm. it doesn't have the yeah right the, the the burden of your other ideas political thought and so on so so now that we're sitting with you do you feel the burden of being kind of the face of ethereum mm -hmm. i mean there's a very large community of developers mm -hmm. but nevertheless yeah is there like a burden associated with that there definitely is this is uh, definitely a big reason why i've uh, been trying to kind of push for the Ethereum ecosystem to become more decentralized in many ways. Just encouraging a lot of kind of core Ethereum work to happen outside of the Ethereum foundation and of expanding the number of people that are making different kinds of decisions, having kind of multiple software implementations instead of one and all of these things. Like there's a lot of things that I've tried to do to and kind of remove myself as a single point of uh, failure because that is something that a lot of people criticize, criticize me for. Um, so if you look at like the most uh, fundamentally successful open source projects, uh -huh. it seems that it's hmm. like a sad reality when I think uh -huh. about it, is it seems to be that one person is a crucial contributor often. If you look at Linus from, mm -hmm. from, uh, for, uh, for Linux, for the kernel. Yeah, that is possible. And I'm definitely not planning to disappear. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting um, tension that mm -hmm. uh, projects like this kind of desire a single entity, and yet they're fundamentally distributed. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if there's something interesting to say about that kind of structure and thinking about the future of cryptocurrency. Does there need to be a leader? There's different kinds of leaders. You know, there's... Uh... There's dictators who control all the money. There's uh, people who control organizations. There's uh, kind of high priests that just have themselves and their Twitter followers. Uh, what kind of leader are you, would you say? Yeah, in these days, um, <laughs> I actually yeah, a bit more in the, high, in the high priest direction than before. Yeah. Like, I definitely actually don't do all that much of kind of going around and like, ordering Ethereum Foundation people to do things because I think those things are important. I, if, if there's something that I do think is important, I, I do just usually kind of say it publicly or just kind of say it to people. And uh, quite often, projects just kind of start doing it. 